Hi guys, it's Claire's and today we are going to do a tutorial on a nice hot uh, holiday drink. Uh, today's tutorial involves a little bit of um, sketching as well, which is why I have my pencil out ready. So let's get through the sketching bit first and then uh, we will get into the uh, colors and the brushes and everything else. So I just have a regular pencil and I'm drawing on my Canson watercolor paper. So um, first things first, I want to do a cup that's fairly simple. Um, for those of you who are well acquainted with or mediocrely acquainted with drawing, I'm just doing like a an arc right here. And then I'm going to do another one because this is the shape of my cup. It's going to go quite, it's gonna go like this and kind of inward. And then I'm just gonna do a rough one on this side as well. And this is where our little handle will be. So very loosely, we're just kind of drawing in some uh, guides for it so that once we get in with our uh, coloring we can we know exactly what's going where and then this is the base and you can kind of tweak your shapes if you feel like it's not as to your liking as per your liking and this is what I've done here I'm not doing so much I mean you could do the other side off this like so you're just drawing in an oval but just because we have like some nice whipped cream happening on the top I'm not overly bothered about how that's going to look. And I am just going to also do a, like I mentioned, a handle. Um, you can have your handle coming from the top or over here. I'm just going to start it from here and have it do something like this. There we go. Simple, right? Um, I just want to make sure that my... that my uh, markings are good. So just erasing this because I'm not very, very pleased with how this portion has turned out. So just going to try and mimic this side as best as I can. And then I'm just doing another line identical to what we did for the handle just like this. You can decide how thick you want the handle to be um, or you can just follow along with me as I am going along and we're almost done with the sketch. Just kind of perfecting the edges here and there and then we can kind of move on. All right, so this is this is it, uh, and now we are going to get on with the coloring bit. No, I lied. Uh, we cannot get on with the coloring bit because we need to still do the topping part of it. So let me just do the topping bit, and then we can move on to the coloring bit. So really, we don't really need that back line happening. So uh, I'm just going to have like a mound of... Um, whipped cream happening and I'm just kind of doing a nice fluffy <clears throat> fluffy looking mound and then at the top <clears throat> before we reach the top let me just make sure that the bottom is so from the side, we're going to do a nice little candy cane. <clears throat> and so for that, we're just going to do like an umbrella shape happening here. Facing outward. And then just like we did for the handle, we're mimicking the same method on the inside. Trying to get it as even as possible, 
but if it isn't that's okay because this is a drawing it should be fun it should be loose we're not trying to perfect it and make it look exactly like the real deal and then we're just going to do stripes so for the stripes you guys know how to do that that's fairly simple I'm just doing some lines and end it right there perfect so my stripes are done and now we can do a little bit of holly I guess sorry I'm just perfecting my cup that happens every time I do drawings like this I kind of always feel I'll draw it in the beginning and then I'll be happy with it but then I'll always look at it again or um, glancing at it again I feel like oh my gosh something is off let's change it so please bear with me as I am trying to satisfy my um, overly nitpicky self after I've just told you that this is a loose drawing. Okay, so we're good with this. Um, so for the holly or the mistletoe, I'm just gonna do a couple over here at the top. And I don't want it to be too big so it overpowers the rest of it. Um, so I'll just do a couple here right in front. So here's one little berry. Here's another berry, and here's one more. And then we'll just do the mistletoe leaf right here. And then I'll do another one over here, We're kind of peeking out. And I think that's that's good enough. We don't need anything else. We're going to keep this simple and just focus on the painting of the mug and some of the um, the amazing looking um, um, whipped cream. Oh, and there's going to be chocolate in this as well. So what I'm going to do is just do a couple of um, drips of chocolate. So we're going to have that happening. Uh, you can kind of pick your drips wherever you want it to happen, but I'm just going to do some over here. And so these are fun, right? And I'll do a couple here. And then just like one really like fat big one or messy one happening over here and make this look like a really scrumptious chocolate rich drink there we go perfect so like the drips really add something extra to it doesn't it um you could also add a p a couple of like i guess mm, what's the word i'm looking for uh strands no not strands but like lines of chocolate happening on the whipped cream as well but we could probably always do that once we finish painting uh, in the meantime if you want to give some direction to your um, whipped cream I can suggest just doing a couple of lines like this so you know where the shadows are and you're kind of working in with with that And maybe even give it a nice little point at the top if you want to. It's up to you. Leaving it at this. And now we can start with the painting. So I did warn you guys about uh, having, well, on Instagram at least, uh, on having a feet that's dominantly pink. And so for this to here, we're going to use my favorite Matter Lake Red from St. Petersburg for the cup first. And I'm going to use... Um, the number four silver black velvet, the Neptune number eight, uh, and I think that's it for now. If I introduce the number eight silver black velvet, I will most definitely let you know. Um, but yes, so first things first, we're gonna mix in some of this color onto our palettes, 
and I want a consistency where it is a lot uh, very diluted so that it's a nice light pink wash uh, before we kind of go in and add a couple of darker strokes here and there so I'm getting a nice enough consistency and then I'm going to go in and add my lines of pink following the um, drawing that we've done here so just adding some lines to paint this in this is always the fun part guys as you know and if you want to leave if you want to leave some uh, white space in between see if you can if not not a big deal I normally I've mentioned this in previous um, tutorials as well when I do a <clears throat> tutorial and it has a base drawing for some reason I always end up not being as loose in my in my rendition of it because I'm kind of so busy following the trend or sorry not the trend but like the the uh, drawings that I've kind of used as the base so as I'm kind of going along and painting it I'm just adding more water instead of more color and perfecting my base here I'm gonna leave a little bit of white happening there and I'm gonna try and leave some white at the rim guys um, and maybe that'll happen more when we add in the chocolate color for the drips but it really does help giving a really nice light and dark and shadow effect so I urge you to kind of try it and if you do this tutorial once and you don't end up getting that white try it again uh, if you like it obviously and if you want to really have a go at it then definitely so adding and spreading the color as best as I can I'm trying to leave some white space you can also what you can also do is just like wash off all the color and using just water you can actually go in and swipe and get like a nice light white or light pink rather so you're swiping off extra color so like for instance here's another swipe happening and you can see the difference right so you're just like literally swiping the color off um, I'm gonna go ahead and create the handle now at this point and again we're doing the same thing we're just kind of going in and coloring it all nicely you can use your number four if you prefer to use that since this is tiny and again for the handle I'm trying to leave some white space so I got a little bit over there but it would have been nicer to kind of get it at the top so let me see if my swipe works here <clears throat> uh, so let me just perfect the edge first there we go and now I can, you know what, I'm going to use the number four to do this swipe. Let's see if it works. Not quite, but it's okay because it's fine. All right, so now we're going to go and add a couple of touch-ups here and there while this area is still damp-ish. Uh, and I'm just going to add a couple of shadowy effects. So using the number four, I'm going in and I'm adding... A little bit of extra color in certain areas where it'll be a lot darker than the others so like there and then so when that happens and you're not getting a nice enough blend just take water and just blend it out. And there you go. You got like a nice darker blend happening over there. And then if you like wherever you want to add that additional dark happening, uh, just and it's and it's already dried up. Just go back in with water and smoothen it out. And there you go. You have your nice enough blend. 
I'm going to give some over here off to the side. And then blend it out. There we go. So we have our we have our cup ready. And now we're going to go ahead and do some of the um, some of the stuff on the top. So for the whipped cream, I'm going to use like a gray. Um, so obviously you can use your Payne's gray or you can use a tad bit of the black. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is using my number eight. I'm going to do a wash of water over that area first. So just taking water on my brush. I'm just going to do a quick wash over this area. Around the little berries so that it doesn't get into the berries once we kind of go in with our with our little gray. All right, so now that's done. I'm just gonna get a tad, tad, slight amount of black since I'm using black. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this. A swoosh of color in the areas where I have outlined um, for the shape of it. So I've done like these two little shapes happening. So I want the grays to be like in and around the areas where the shadow places are happening. So again, just taking a tad bit of gray or black. This is obviously too much, but I'm going to blend it out. So washing off all the color. I am now blending it around this berry area and pushing it downward and around the other side and this just gives it that nice hint of shadow. This might have been a bit too dark but that's okay we can always wipe it off. Anything that's too dark guys just kind of do the swipe effect that I showed you earlier so I'm just swiping the color off so it's not too stark. And I'm just getting a tad bit more. It's best to kind of, I guess, gauge how dark it is by adding it onto your your um, your palette first. And I'm just adding it in one area, like one side of the um, um, what would you call these? I guess the layer of the whipped cream just at the top. So this way, it's like implied line almost so just like this and when it's damp enough it gives you that nice blend uh, and so you're kind of seeing where the blend ends or starts or where the light is hitting so I like how the blend is happening here I might go in and once it dries up I might just go in and add more but I'm just sweeping off some color yeah, and you'll have to like fuss around a little bit when it comes to things like this because you're just kind of trying to make it as loose but like also kind of tad bit realistic as possible. So I'm not going to add any more shadow to the bottom. And the reason being is because we're going to go in with the with the brown. I'm just adding a tad bit more to these areas here. So that when it dries up, it doesn't look too light. So feel free to do that. There we go. So we have that bit happening. And now we can kind of go in and add uh, the berries first. Because we'll leave the brown once this is dried up. Just in case we make any mistakes. So... I'm getting some of the pinky red 
that we have and I'm going to mix it in uh, onto my palette here and I think I want to add a little bit of black to it and now that's too much black because now it's like a berry color so I want it to be like a nice darker red so here we go that's the red or it looks more like a purple so I'm gonna paint the back one the background berry first and I'm gonna leave some white space in between as I am painting it And then once I have this, I'm going to go ahead and take my number eight and with just water on it, I'm going to swipe a tad bit of the pink and paint the other berry right here. Again, leaving white space. And you can see that it's kind of blending in, but there's also like a bit of is too much water so I'm just taking my paper towel and I'm dabbing it then using the same brush I'm getting a bit more of the dark berry red or purple color that we've mixed and I'm going to paint in the third one and I'm kind of touching I'm, I've, I've left white space in between but I'm kind of also touching these uh, the other two berries just to get like a nice blend but you can clearly see that they're all different berries uh, now washing off all the color we're going to go ahead and paint in the um, the leaves for that I'm using my green and using the number four I'm going to go ahead and paint these in I'm just wiping off any excess water so things don't pool on my sheet. And again, you can try and leave some white space if possible uh, in between the leaf, like while painting the leaf, I mean. And once that's painted in, you can push all the color down to the bottom. So it's darkest at the bottom and then just getting more color you can just add it in certain areas of the leaf to highlight it like the edges perhaps because that would be darker against the uh, against the candy cane obviously would be darker too and just leave it at that and that's nice that's like a nice pop of green right so now we're going to go on this side and do the same thing and we'll just lay down this light green first and then we'll go in and add the darker green to highlight the certain areas. Oops, I got some of the red in there. So when this happens, take your paper towel, which you should have handy, and just wipe it off. And then you can go back in with your darker green and just cover up your mistake as best as you can. And if not, that's okay because it's a, uh, it's a loose drawing. And so when you actually have blends like this, I normally like it. I think it looks a lot nicer. Um, yeah, now you know how to fix it in case you do want to fix it. So adding that in there, I'm just going to add one more thing, which is just like a thin line in between to indicate that's where the vein is. And then we move on to our candy cane. So for the candy cane, you can add your little grays in between. Uh, so I'm just using the gray that I have here. And I'm just going to add a couple of gray strokes 
in between um, the red ones. And this is just to also kind of mimic what we have happening with the with this area here because it's not entirely just white. It's got a little bit of gray to kind of show shadow and whatnot. And then we're going in and we are getting, let's take the same color that we've mixed for the berries. Let's see how that works. I'm gonna start on this end here first because the ones by the leaves are still um, damp. So I'm gonna give it a little more time to dry off. Now, even with this, you can leave some white space. Um, and again, that's indicative of light and shadow. And by white space, I mean like this. So for instance, I'm doing the border for this and then I'm just going to leave this white space right there at the top. I should have done it here at the bottom too, uh, but that's okay. Again, I'm going to do the same thing here. Leaving a bit of white space. And there you go. You see how it adds that additional amazing light and dark effect? As soon as you add that white space. All right, doing the same thing here. Careful not to touch the green. And there we go. And we are done with that. It's pretty, right? So it's kind of coming along quite nicely. Now we're just gonna finish off with doing the chocolate dripping. For my chocolate, I'm gonna use two browns. I'm going to use the um, raw sienna and the sepia. So first thing I'm gonna do is get some of the raw sienna onto the base. So mixing some of that here and Using the number four, I'm going to dampen the area. And so for that, let's just go ahead and start. If you feel like it's too much, just use your paper towel to dab the excess paint off. And you can see as I'm going along, I'm leaving some white space in between the um, in between the cup and the, the actual uh, whipped cream. And you can try and leave some white space around like where the drips are happening too. And very fine like lines I'm kind of extending to go over to the other area and complete the chocolate drip. And then going off over here too, I'm just gonna get some water and have it go down. the way down so you can notice you can see that I'm there's quite a bit of white space happening amongst like inside the drip as well and again I'm just making sure that I don't overcompensate with the detail and leave some um, to make it look kind of like how we did the candy cane there so then getting my uh, my sepia I'm gonna go in and do the rest. So this area is all still damp, so when I'm laying this color down, it's going to give me a nice blend. And I want that blend because it's gonna look nice and soft and it's gonna make it look a lot more scrumptious. Now, where's my color? There we go. I'm gonna, my hand is shaking, but I wanna be able to have a nice brown line that connects all the, all the syrup, the drips. But, so that's why I'm kind of kneeling at this point to kind of get it without messing up. 
So bear with me as I kind of hold my breath trying to get this done. And then we're doing the, the longest strip here. And it's coming along quite nicely. I really like it. So I'm just going to make sure I get a good enough consistency of the brown here because I want it to be dark. Like this is some nice dark rich chocolate that's happening here. I'm a chocolate lover guys so sorry for everyone who's either uh, intolerant, dairy intolerant, although I'm sure you can get chocolate that's like using other stuff in there or who just doesn't like chocolate period. So I'm just going in with the darker color right now and a thicker consistency. I'm trying to get it looking a lot richer. So I think this might need to dry a bit more before we can go ahead and add some more uh, dark detail if you want. Um, and I'm just saying that because as I'm laying it down, not all the areas are catching on perfectly. So perhaps you can wait for it to dry some more or just try a thicker consistency with your, with your color as you're going along. But it all depends on how dark you want the chocolate to look. So that's also a factor. So this is good. I like how this is looking. Uh, one more thing that I'm going to do is this. I'm going to add, using this brown, I'm just going to add a couple of details happening on the inside here. So it looks like the chocolate is like happening like dripping or seeping into the um, whipped cream that we have too. So I'm just doing these cute little dabs all the way around. And then just dipping some, the tip in water. I'm just kind of doing the same motion here. Some can be, it can be like uneven. As you kind of go along. Now I'm just washing off all the color and I'm just going to use with just water on it. I'm just going to continue with the motion that we were just doing. Just make sure you don't have too much water otherwise then it's gonna start pooling again. And I want it to kind of fade off so it looks like it's like blending in with the um, with the what am I trying to say with the whipped cream sorry I get so intense sometimes with trying to get something done a certain way that I forget what I'm trying to say and this normally happens during videos too so so I'm just adding faint hints right now all around because that would be most natural and realistic. And you know what? As I'm kind of looking at this, I think it makes sense to even take a little bit of the brown that's happening. And even instead of using the, the gray, we should have probably used some of the brown. But that's okay. You can probably try it for the next one if you want to try this again.
and it just adds so much of a more natural effect and I'm just adding a tad bit of extra brownish hue around our berries Wow, guys, this is actually evolving now. So I'm actually adding more brown because after I added that, I'm realizing this looks a lot nicer with the brown. So I'm just adding a couple of touch-ups here and there. So it kind of mimics. And uh, it doesn't look that far off from what we have happening here. This actually kind of looks like a nice toasted marshmallow drink. Almost. There we go. And I'm going to leave it at that. And we have our cute little Christmas drink. So uh, actually what you can also do is add a couple of more details into the actual cup itself. Because now I'm looking at it and I'm like, we can add some shadow. We can totally add more shadow here and there. Because I like to give my cups more detail that way. And then I'm just smoothing it out with water. Gives you like a nice little texture. And then I'm just adding the base to kind of also make it look um, darker. And I'm literally using the same color that we have, guys. Leftover color to just kind of highlight certain areas. And then I'm just going to use some to do the handle. And mainly at the top here. I'm just going in to have that nice dark flare happening. And then I'm just smoothing this stuff out here at the bottom. I want there to be a stark difference where the handle starts, so I'm just going in and just adding that extra layer. Um, and I think we're pretty much done. I'll just do this bit on the side as it goes down. If you do these dry strokes like this, it kind of also gives you a nice effect. So as you can see, a nice draw, um, raw effect. There we go. And then finally, we're just going to add a bit of shadow at the bottom. So I'm just wetting it really quickly. And you can either use your gray or the brown. So I'm using some of the gray. And just kind of adding, leaving a fine white line between uh, white space between the cup and the shadow that I'm creating and I'm just adding the additional dark color to it at the edge there maybe even get some more there we go just like that
so it spreads out nicely. And we are done. So let me know in the comments, guys, what you guys thought. Hit the like button, subscribe, uh, share this in your social media circles. Uh, let me know what you guys thought about this. And please also share. Share your artwork with me on uh, Instagram and Facebook um, or through DMs, whatever suits you best. I love, love, love seeing your artwork. So thanks for watching, guys, and we will chat soon. Bye.